Uh, so the Republican response to all of this uh, news about attempts to subvert the election is, hey, Trump didn't carry out any of these plans. He left office after all. Don't be worried about it. But they completely ignore the fact that he was actually trying to get the right personnel in place to carry out this attempted coup. Any or all of the maneuvers he considered might have come to fruition if not for the courage of a few public officials who actually resisted his pressure. Now, this matters because Trump is still mulling a run in 2024, believe it or not. In the meantime, he's actually endorsing candidates in other races, many of whom adopt his very same positions, including Republicans running for control of elections in three key battleground states that Trump lost last year, Arizona, Michigan, and Georgia. Now, all three of those candidates support Trump's big lies I was mentioning that the election was in fact stolen from him. It's part of a push to remake the Republican Party in his own image and purge conservatives who won't parrot Trump's false narratives. Now, we all remember his war with Liz Cheney, who was stripped of her leadership role by her fellow House Republicans for not towing the Trump line. And don't forget that the last month when one of the 10 House Republicans who voted for Trump's impeachment announced that he was actually retiring from Congress, Trump responded by saying, one down, nine to go. The former president, ladies and gentlemen, keeping it classy as always. But with many of the party's elected politicians either pushing Trump's lies or excusing his behavior as no big deal, can the Republican Party ever be anything but an authoritarian personality cult again? And if enough of Trump's candidates actually win key positions, could 2020's failed coup attempts end up being a dress rehearsal for the real deal? Joining me now is MSNBC contributor Charlie Sykes, who's also editor-at-large of The Bulwark, and Susan Del Percio, an MSNBC political analyst and Republican strategist. Uh, it's great to have both of you with us. Charlie, Trump seems to have a laser focus, laser focus, on getting Republicans elected who can do his bidding in future elections. Nobody that he endorses disagrees with him on anything, for that matter. He's even expressed interest in someone primarying Mitch McConnell, and it seems like he may get his wish, whether it's not whether or not it's successful, that's a whole other question. But there are people who are willing to stand up and say, I belong to the leader. You know, I, I actually was uh, as as you were as you were talking, I actually wrote down the word that you in fact had used. Um, you, you stole my thunder. Because, you know, for the people who were saying, okay, so January sixth failed, um, he was too incompetent to pull off a coup. Well uh, I think you are exactly right when you say it is a dry run. Um, I think you're exactly right when you say that it was much closer than we thought. And the way he is remaking the Republican Party and elected officials is truly extraordinary. I mean, um, the the candidates around the country that he is backing um, are not just, you know, potential uh, subverters of election. In Arizona, one of his uh, endorsed candidates for governor is running explicitly on saying that she would have overturned, overthrown the election. So um, you're also right, Eamon, when you point out the small number of people who could have changed it all, uh, if you didn't have the same officials in Michigan, in Pennsylvania, in places like Georgia and Arizona. And Donald Trump and his supporters are, in a rather systematic way, going about putting his people there. And the lack of open resistance in the Republican Party is truly extraordinary. You can count on one hand the number of elected Republican officials who are saying, whoa, this is wrong, this is dangerous. We may be Republicans, but we're not going to go along with the subversion of democracy. So, yes, this can all happen again. That point, the AP reports that a lot of Republicans aren't happy with Trump's endorsements. For one thing, they think a lot of Trump's candidates aren't electable. Uh, and for another, he's not actually vetting any of them. He's using his own litmus test. Three of his chosen candidates for the House and Senate have been accused of domestic violence. And that really raises the question, what does the party do if these candidates start winning primaries? Because you are not hearing a lot of condemnation or anti-Trump condemnation from mainstream Republicans. They're kind of turning uh, their head or putting their head in the sand and letting him do what he wants to do. Yeah, um, I think what we're going to see is a lot of swing districts become very viable for Democrats if Trump extremists win those primaries. What we saw early on with Trump's team, probably the most important thing they did um, for political purposes was to stack state committees, Republican state committees, with their members. 
And by doing that, they ensure that Trump candidates win the party support. And that's why you're not seeing any pushback, because even incumbents are, are just afraid not to, to, to get their party endorsement right now anymore. But due to redistricting, especially in some blue states like New York and California, there will be swing districts up, and you are going to see the Trumpiest Trump Trumpsters out there winning primaries and losing those seats. Trump uh, Trumpsters out there. Uh, Charlie, you had Mike Pence, former vice president of this country, the man whose name they were chanting, hang Mike Pence on January the 6th. The man who, if there was a single person who should be condemning what happened on January the 6th, it would be Mike Pence. He was on Sean Hannity's show, and he just talked about January the 6th. Watch this. I know the media wants to distract from the Biden administration's failed agenda by focusing on one day in January. They want to use that one day wow. to try and demean uh, the, the, the character and intentions of 74 million Americans who believed we could be strong again and prosperous again and supported our administration in 2016 and, and 2020. I know it's a bit of a head scratcher, Charlie, but he's talked about he's talking about one day in January. That was the day he was almost killed by Trump supporters for not rigging the election results. What is wrong with Mike Pence? I mean, I don't know if you can explain it, but explain it if you can. He won't even criticize uh, Trump. Why would he expect any elected Republicans to? No, I, I actually can't explain this. I mean, I, I know that it's, you might feel like you know, same old, same old of, of Mike Pence being a, tr a Trump toady, but. You think about January 6th, arguably, that was one of his finest moments. That was when he said no. That that could have been his legacy. Um, and, and I guess it, it is kind of amazing. Well, I, you know, over the last five years, we've seen people set themselves on fire and destroy their reputations in service of Trump. But you have Mike Pence, who is basically setting his own best moment on fire when he stood up and refused to go along with, with the coup. And now he is down playing that. The, the other kind of amazing thing is that um, if Mike Pence actually thinks he does have a future in this Trumpian Republican Party, because the reality is, Eamon, he's still a dead man walking, no matter what a toady he is. Yeah, and I was going to say, you know, this is a man who could have just gone quietly into the sunset and could have one day be written about by historians as the man who saved our democracy instead. Wow. 